we are back with another afternoon release. So, I mentioned it yesterday. No surprise these four days we knocked out the four tier one decks. Let me know what deck you would like to see next down below. As we go further down the tier list, there's going to be less examples to pull from if we stick to strictly using tops. However, with multiple DLCs this weekend, maybe they will help decide which deck we should do next. Anyway, we did Tempo, Ruby Amethyst, and Popsicle Control. So today we're here to talk about Steel Song. And how this goes, we go over highlighted cards, the deck core, and tech cards before revealing the all incredible amazing absolutely not perfect list but i don't know i think that the lists are pretty solid i do want to talk about something uh yeah i do want to talk about something pr pretty quick here in the beginning when we get to the final deck list i've had it brought to my attention that there's too many one outs you're hurting consistency this and that that's kind of a thinking in a vacuum where like with the popsicle video, there's like there's so many two ofs. There's you need to play four ofs because consistency. But that's not necessarily how consistency works. You need to ask yourself a few things when you're deck building. Do you want to see the card all the time in all the matches? Do you have other cards that do similar things? Do you have ways to tutor it out or get to it sooner? And what are the pros and cons of the card? These questions can dictate whether you want to play two copies or four copies of certain things because just because a card is good doesn't mean you want to play four copies of it. Um, one example being like Madame Medusa, Big Sisu, and Be Prepared. They all serve similar roles in removal, especially Sisu and Be Prepared, while all having pros and cons that are better or worse than each other to be able to use when you're deciding which ratios to play. But I don't think you should play four of all of them because they're all good cards. And I'm not saying to play four or two of them and not play the third one either. This is where ratios come in. Another one was Little Sisu, Daring Visitor, and Brawl. They both serve a very similar function. However, Sisu allows shift lines and Brawl is inkable. So again, you're weighing pros and cons on cards that do similar things. Again, I didn't play four of both of them. But you don't look at it as three and three. You look at it as six uh, six techs against the meta um, things like that so do keep that in mind it's a, it's not just in a vacuum oh too many two ofs not consistent that's just not how deck building works if you guys would like i will break down and do a huge in-depth on all my thoughts using a bunch of these decks as examples breaking down the different categories of cards why how why it makes sense all that good stuff but anyway today's video is slightly different the highlighted cards Make up the deck core. There are no other cards that I wanted to put into the deck, or the highlighted cards, and there's none of these core cards that I wanted to take out of the highlighted cards. I mean, realistically, we could have just put just Whole New World up there because, well, you know, it just highlights the Steel songs. It's showing these songs. But when you talk about Steel songs, what songs are you really playing? These, again, are the minimum ratios played across all of the tops recorded. Spreadsheet linked down below for all of that good information but when you look at steel song every single top played these cards at these minimums that doesn't mean that the majority well I'm getting confused in my words um let the storm rage on was played at four by the majority so that doesn't mean you should play three this just means three is the minimum uh along came zeus most commonly was played at three uh, Naveen typically was a two to a three of, and some lists actually played it at four, but a few played it at one. So that's just kind of how this works. But Cinderella, Ariel, Rapunzel, uh, Strength of the Raging Fire, and Whole New World all were unanimous four ofs across the board. So if you're going to play Steel Song, put these 26 cards into your deck, and then go ahead and fill in the blanks. What are we going to fill in the blanks with? Well, I have a handful of options for you there too. Daisy Duck, uh, you can get aggressive, it's a one drop. The four willpower as we all know in quest for two and it kind of forces answers and can speed up your deck very quickly. Other ways that you can kind of play in a fast paced deck um, with Steel Song would be the Golden Harp. And in the two drop spot we have Piglet and Mr. Smee, which both also fill in those roles and do a really good job there. So. If you're looking for a girl, that's kind of your four options in that early play line. Another strong option you have on turn one would either be the queen or Robin Hood shift line. So again, down in the five cost cards, we see the shift queen and the shift Robin Hood as well. Um, it's not, I'm not surprised that neither one of these made it into the core because 
Usually they're not played by everyone. A lot of the time people pick or choose Queen or Robin Hood. Some did play both, but the majority of the time you kind of pick one or the other because there's just so many other good cards in the deck. And soon you'll see which one I rolled with. In the two drop spot, we also have Cinderella there as well, which opens up some shift lines for big Cinderella that we can see down towards the bottom a bit more. But in addition to that, it's just kind of niche card draw and a 2-2 body. Um, I'm not huge on her personally, and most of the tops were not, but one of them played her, so she earns her spot here, the little knight in training. Ursula then, also another two-cost card. She's a four-singer. I think that she's actually pretty strong. Majority of lists did play her at two to four, um, I want to say two and four were probably pretty close to even as far as ratio. Some played her at three, uh, but this card, she's a four singer and two costs. What kind of four cost songs might you have? I mean, you have your three cost songs, obviously, but you also have Along Came Zeus. You also have Find Em Flatten Em, which is down below. Um, Find Em Flatten Em being a really good answer to item decks like Popsicle Control, which happens to have a very good steel song matchup. So keep that in mind. Doc, Lawrence, and Pete coming in as some of our three drop um, tech cards. Doc, he's a multi quester and he can reduce costs of characters played. Still not a very common card. Lawrence, when he doesn't have damage, gets the four extra strength, which means he can one shot a Daisy Duck, which is really good, and does have the two strength of his own, or sorry, two lore to quest for of his own. The Pete obviously is going to be able to come in and shut down your opposing. Um, your opponent's actions such as steel song mirror matches such as those b preps and other really strong cards like friends on the other side some four cost tech cards you might consider alan adale um, one of our new cards out of shimmering skies two three four cost inkable quest for two but whenever you play a song you gain a lore so it's kind of like sleepy's flute in regard uh, whereas this one just whenever you play a song you gain the lore so if you play multiple songs in the turn you gain multiple lore in the turn unlike flute Flute being a one-turn, one-deal. Um, flute, though, requires item removal, whereas Adele, well, they can remove him from any way that they can get him off the board. Tinkerbell, uninkable, four costs, another one, uh, another tech card that is option. When you play this character, look at the top four cards. Reveal a character and put it in your hand. So it's kind of like Ariel, but for characters as opposed to uh, songs. Um, again, not a super common card, but she was played in a couple of the tops. We mentioned Queen and Robin Hood. However, Tragic Hero Beast is in there. At one point, this card was played in the vast majority of Steel Song lists. We're talking set three, um, and I'm sure set two, he was even more popular. Uh, but once set four hit, Beast really started to see a decline in play in Steel Song. That's because there was just other options, and he felt almost, I don't know, I don't want to say win more because that's not really the term for him. He unneeded maybe which kind of coincides with win more um it's a fantastic card but the dex cost already gets up there with things like rapunzel and robin hood and these other cards so maybe that's part of why a lot of people just don't go with beast as well because the deck already costs enough perdita i thought was interesting to be in here because typically you're not running a lot of one and two cost cards however if you pair her up with things like piglet or smee bringing them back it just feels pretty good ariel um, I do really like Ariel. Uh, spoiler alert, she does not make it into my final list as bad as I wanted her to. It was one of the last cards we cut out. I just needed to get down lower. Um, actually, scratch that spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, she made it into the final cut. Um, but anyway, it is a shift four, so you can shift her over your three cost Ariel if you wish. But when you play a song, you can pay two ink to deal three damage. It's just a really nice way to deal a lot more damage and take care of your opponent's boards and control the state, especially when a deck like Popsicle and even Ruby Amethyst are so popular with Tamatoa, with um, you know Big Sisu, with these really strong cards. Uh, you want to be able to deal with them quickly because a lot of them also quest for quite a bit. You need to be able to respond to them. In that regard, Jafar is a 7 challenger. The downside is on your opponent's turn, he is a big old 0 for his stat line. Um, characters with 4 or less costs, though, cannot challenge. Usually, I don't know, I don't really see that being a huge issue, but it means that they have to commit their bigger cost characters to taking him out at least. So that does kind of give him some protection, and he can quest for 2 in the process. Tinkerbell. Giant Fairy, really good. Um, last format, she was crazy. This format, I'm 
Unfortunately, I'm not huge on Tinkerbell right now in the format. That doesn't mean it's not a really strong card and it doesn't mean you shouldn't play it at all. I'm just, I'm not sold that Tinkerbell is the answer, especially for Steel Song in the current format. Uh, Stitch Surfer offers a potential for draw and also a big eight booty, quest for two. He's got some utility, but again, I don't think he's a very strong answer. Cinderella, however, I do really like her. Her five strength, resist two, five willpower, multiple questing, comes in for shift, play a song, and she can go ahead and take on a readied character. I like Cinderella a lot, this format. I think that she's strong. I think that if you're looking for a high cost character to make an impact, she is a great choice that you can go for. Some songs that we see down here, Be Our Guest, being able to get to characters quicker, Bare Necessities, going after those non-characters in your opponent's hand, and just getting that overall hand knowledge. Um, World's Greatest Criminal Mind, I really like this card right now. Again, Tamatoa, Big Sisu, uh, Maleficent Dragon, three very strong cards in your worst matchup, Maui. Uh, like, I really, really like this card. And if you pair it up with the Queen package, it makes just about everything a target. When you give plus four uh, to your opponent, it just it w works really well because you don't have to go minus four to your opponent, plus four to you. You can give your opponent the plus four as well and then take out their characters with the world's greatest criminal mind. Find them flat. And again, we mentioned it's a good counter for item decks. Uh, grab your swords a great counter for aggro decks and then you have lantern kind of like a dock where you can get ca your characters out cheaper and then flute kind of like the alana dale where you can go ahead and get some passive lore just by playing your songs so these are a bunch of tech cards that we saw see play into steel songs so what does our list look like um i never know what to call the deck instead of just saying steel song perfect melody it's just my go-to every single format. So version 5.0. I know we're a month in, but it's the first time I mess a steel song this format. Uh, keeping the core intact again, I went with the Queen package over Robin Hood. I was trying to fit in both, and I got to a point where I had 68 cards, and I'm like, okay, I think it's time that Robin Hood comes out. Um, I just, like I said, right now, World's Greatest Criminal Mind, I really, really like that card, this format, and the queen package just makes it so much better. Um, turn two, whole new world feels really strong as well, especially if your opponent doesn't mulligan very good, uh, or I should say doesn't mulligan much. Like, you go to mulligan and your opponent says, like, I'm good, or m just mulligan one, they probably really like their hand. So all of a sudden you hit that whole new world on turn two and you make them lose their really good hand on the back side of that. If they think you're going to do that, they might just keep a bad hand, but that's really risky because if you don't whole new world them, they just voluntarily kept a bad hand. Uh, so turn two whole new world is no joke, especially when your opponent likes their hand. Again, you know, kind of judge it. Don't just hurry up and mulligan and say what you're doing. Let your opponent kind of see how they react or how many they're going to go mulligan. Pay attention to things like that. So Queen and Cinderella in our one drop spots into our two drop spots. I went with a kind of aggro package. I saw a lot of 3-3 splits, but I really do like Smee more than I do Piglet. So I went with a 4-2 split instead. I just think Smee overall is better. I debated not even playing Piglet at all. Smee, to me, no question. It pairs up with Rapunzel really nicely too to be able to get some draws as he self-damages himself. The three strength is really good when your opponent's trying to take care of it. Um, the three willpower usually isn't huge because the self damage more or less makes him two willpower by your opponent's turn anyway. Um, Ursula Singer, again, I, I really like her in here for, you know, your three cost songs, uh, for your lower costs, like your bare necessities, but bare necessities, greatest criminal mind, storm rage on strength of the raging fire, along came Zeus and find them flat six of your songs. Um, totaling out 16 copies out of your 21 songs are singable by your Ursula. So I do really, really like her um, in this deck. Ariel, no, no questions there. Um, Pete, uh, I think I think two is plenty good because you don't necessarily want to see him all the time. You don't necessarily want to see him late or not early. I mean, he's more like verse um, Amethyst or not Amethyst. Well kind of amethyst ruby decks like ruby amethyst as a be prepared stopper as you start to get into that late game and you have special guests show up on camera and they 
you're fearing that be prepared, whether you saw their hand already, whether something's going on like that, you can use your repeat to go ahead and stop their be prepared. Um, can I have some crackers? Yes, you can have some crackers. Okay. And then we go on to Prince Naveen. Um, when you play him, you can play a six cost or, loss or lower song from your hand for free. So you can play any song in your deck because guess what? None of our songs cost more than six. None of them cost more than five, actually, if you're being technical. So you can pair him up really nicely after like an aerial. You play your aerial on three, look at the top four, grab a potential song. Then you can go ahead on five. Say you have Whole New World and Something Else Good. You can play the Something Else Good first get the advantage from it make sure you ink before you whole new world play your naveen play your whole new world for free on the same turn as well and you just get an insane amount of advantage um i think i think two's the best ratio for him i really really do um messing around with him a lot i i think four is too many three feels weird two just felt like a good sweet spot with him uh rapunzel crazy card draw card 50 dollar card there's a reason for it um there's no reason not to play for Rapunzel unless you can't afford it. That's the only reason not to do it. Um, again, Queen. I really like the Queen package. I really, really like the World's Greatest Criminal Mind package. So we're keeping that in there. And then I did go with Ariel. Um, I was going to cut her. I really was. So when I first started saying that before, I meant it. However, um, just again, dealing that extra damage is just really, really strong. Uh, if you have the ink to do it and you can like sing a couple songs even and deal six damage because you can use her multiple times. Um, I think she's really strong. I actually played her for a little bit in Bucky discard last format because I ran so many songs, and it worked really well as just a way to deal with board presence um, after dealing with their hand. So I think she's really strong. I do like her a lot, and that gets us into our songs. Bare Necessities. Um, as much as I want to play more of this card, turns 1 and 2 are really about setting up your Cinderella, your Queen, or your Aggro package. Like, you're not really wanting to just play it real slow in the beginning. You want to have a kind of a faster pace in the beginning. And as the game goes on and on and on, Bare Necessities just kind of feels a little less impactful. Um, again, World's Greatest Criminal Mind, I think this card is crazy right now. I really, really like it a lot. The Storm and Strength, I personally play four of each. I don't think anyone should play less of each. Um, Zeus, again, really strong. Ruby Amethyst being a very popular deck too and being able to deal five uh, damage to one of those um, Queen's Castles is a nice way to deal a lot of damage to it quick. And again, recurring thing, Tamatoa. So many of these cards have so much willpower. You need strong ways to knock them down quickly. I do like to find them platinum as a one of. You can try to tutor it out with your aerial. You can try to get to it with your whole new worlds. And you don't necessarily want it on turn three, turn four. It's that turn five, six area when they start to rack up their items and you just completely get rid of all of them. And it feels really, really good. Another way too, it's a late game answer to like a lucky dime. So you don't just lose out that way. Whole new worlds. Yeah, makes sense. Um, then grab your swords. I think the deck already does pretty good into hyper aggro strategies, but I just wanted to respect them that little bit more. I wanted to just not neglect them and to acknowledge that there's potential there. I don't think Hyper Ego is very popular, and I tried talking to someone about that um, before because they're like, I think it's going to be better, and I'm like, I, I think it is better, but the problem is Hyper Ego can just run into matches where it just can't win because of the strategy of the deck. Um, like this matchup, it's just incredibly hard to win it, which... I shouldn't say can't win, just incredibly hard. And here's the thing. Really good players don't want to take a deck into an event where one of the best decks is just hard, hard to beat. They want to remove as much of that luck aspect as they can. They want to play a deck that's going to play well into virtually everything. So for that reason, the majority of the best players will not touch a hyper aggro strategy. It's usually these random players who just play really strong. They can be great players. You don't have to be a well-known player to be a really great player. Every really great player starts somewhere before they're known. That's how they get known, because they go and top an event. So I'm not trying to knock on anyone um, doing things that way. And then 21 songs. I like the flutes. I think it's really strong, too, with Ruby Amethyst, because I think Ruby Amethyst is 
Actually, I picked that deck to win Vegas. I think that they just answer into everything really strongly, and flute can give them a lot of problems, especially if you set up multiple flutes. Just start dropping songs. Even if you don't have like anything to damage or to do, you can just play a song. That's the rules of the game, and then get the lore for it. So I do think flute is the right call right now. Like I said, I think the biggest things here are flute and the world's greatest criminal mind package. Like I think those are the two things that can really push this deck on. And if we see a Steel Song deck win either one of these DLCs, I really believe that world's greatest criminal mind is going to be in the deck as well as the queen package and Sleepy's flute. We'll see if I'm right. I said Ruby Amethyst over Steel Song in Vegas, and the other one I actually didn't make any predictions on, but hmm. I'm going to say Steel Song and Popsicle Control are going to make it into the finals. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, comment down below.